Hello guys, gals, and other pals. My name is Leona DX, and welcome back to another episode of the Battle Lounge. Today, I am so excited. It's finally time we get to talk about Street Fighter VI. It has been the only thing I've been able to think about for a month. Every waking second has been either me thinking about doing something I need to live or... Or thinking about Street Fighter VI. I'm so excited. So I really just want to get right into it. Let's start with just the gameplay. My god. Oh my god. It is so good. Everything about the game has been so incredible to play. From the looks. How everything connects to each other. From the actual game feel. Sitting in game. All of the controls feel super smooth. Street Fighter VI has been overperforming in every possible sense in terms of gameplay. It has taken the really smooth and tight gameplay from Street Fighter V and ramped it up as high as it possibly could for a game like Street Fighter ever could hope to be. So let's get into a bit of the nitty gritty with how Street Fighter VI plays. I want to start with probably the biggest pain point for a lot of people, which is the control styles. I think they're all sick. Honestly, I am going to be a classic control player probably for the entire lifespan of the game. I've tried tinkering with the modern controls. They just don't do it for me. I'm so used to playing with doing like quarter circle inputs, half circle inputs, pendulum inputs, all of that stuff. And the modern controls for someone like me do not feel that intuitive. There's a lot of benefit to the modern controls, especially for people who have not played fighting games or are just getting back into them for the first time in a long time. The biggest benefit, I think, being the instant supers. Like, instant attacks are huge for the game. They don't let you have access to everything. I was just playing with Manon earlier, and I did not have access to, like, half of her kit because I was using modern controls. I kept wondering why I wasn't doing the full screen, like, aerial kick attack. And it was because I was using modern controls. She straight up just doesn't have that attack while you are playing with modern controls. So there are some benefits to playing with modern controls, but I'm sticking with classic because I get to have access to everything. It is what I am most used to. And frankly, I think it's more fun playing with like the actual inputs. Something about it feels really satisfying for me. And while it's a lot harder, a lot more challenging than playing with modern controls. It's just what I'm going to do. I'm more comfortable doing it that way, so that's just how it's going to be. That said, modern controls might end up being pretty good. I've seen a lot of master players on modern controls just because, specifically because of things like the instant supers. Uh, I was I saw a clip of a, of a master Zangief versus a master Luke, and the Zangief made, like, did one attack and the Luke did instant level three and killed the Geef. And I was like, oh, that seems a bit messed up. <laughs> that said, it's probably not going to be a huge issue. It's just play how you want. Honestly, uh, the, di uh, the what are they called? The dynamic controls that you can use in like casuals. Those are also kind of neat. They don't really do anything. There's no real gameplay there you're just kind of hitting buttons and things are happening and eventually somebody dies so eh. but play play how you want uh use whatever control style is comfortable for you however you want to enjoy street fighter 6 is perfectly fine just don't let anybody else get you down because those people are they're assholes don't listen to them play how you want Moving on from that, I really, really want to talk about the characters in the game. Every character in this game is so dope. Every character in this game is so cool. Some of them are really annoying to play against. Like, Kimberly has been super obnoxious in the games that I've played against her. But god, it is so cool watching her combo into her uh, level 3 
and then the music changes and she has the little icon next to her super meter that shows that she's powered up for the rest of the match. I think that's really dope. It doesn't matter how I feel about her gameplay wise. That shit is all super cool. DJ has some absolute sauce. I've seen some messed up stuff come out of that guy. It is so dope. We have the usuals, like Ryu and Ken. They've got all of their usual tools, but having the drive gauge for things like drive rush uh, and then the overdrive attacks. Drive parry has been super important for these guys. Drive gauge is super important for characters like Zangief and also JP. Geef being able to just burn himself out for huge damage in Oki with all of his command grabs has been horrifying to play against. JP being this super weird like strike throw zoner that can faint fireballs into full screen command grabs. Also having like traps that he can set up throughout the screen to mess with people has been super cool. Jamie is still Jamie. Jamie rules. His theme is one of the best in the game. He does all this crazy wreckers into drinks so that he can power up and do more wreckers into drinks. That all is sick. Cammy is still Cammy. Jury is still Jury. Chun Li is still Chun Li. The two characters that I've been playing basically exclusively have been Manon and Marissa. Manon is super weird being this grappler that is also into mid-range and strike throw is super interesting to me. Having like fake attacks that also faint into command grabs. Like her also having a super that is a command grab is really fun. And then like her critical art where since she's uh, into ballet and dance, she's singing while slamming you into the pavement is really funny her metal mechanic meaning that every time that your opponent screws up and you get a command grab the next one's going to be even stronger and then the animations change each time that happens is super satisfying to watch uh, and then marissa marissa is the best character in the game uh i said so which means that it's completely true and i am not biased this huge lady uh this huge gladiator lady with massive punches huge superman punches full screen lunging kicks she has a counter stance that lets her fake into either a command throw or a two hit punch or a low sweep that is so sick not to mention all of the armored attacks Having armor on both the Dragon Punch, which is her Superman Punch, or any of her Gladius attacks, especially Overdrive Gladius, has gotten so many people in my matches and helped me win a ton of matches with it. It's been so satisfying to play Mar Marissa. And her supers. Uh, her supers are super cool. No pun intended there, I promise. The level 1 letting you charge it for a different effect is really sick. Being able to have it be invincible or do extra damage if you charge it has been really interesting for me to experience because I've used both versions and they've both been successful in different scenarios. The level 2 being an anti-air, it's like a weird command grab that's not a command grab anti-air attack that can hit them either in the air or... Or if you don't hit them in the air, it hits them coming down and into overhead. That attack has been so cool to watch if it hits. And then the level 3. What can I say? The level It's the best level 3 in the game. It's so cool. You hit them, and then she shows up, kisses her knuckles, and then punches you so hard you fly to the other side of the screen and break a wall on the other side. And then if it's the critical art... Once you've hit the wall, she punches you again and is like, Take my love! And you have a heart imprinted on your face. It is so cool! God, she is the sickest character in the game. I don't care if anybody says that she's bad. She's dope. God, and that's just the characters. That is just the characters in the game. The systems are ridiculous. The drive gauge, I think, is genius. Honestly, I think it is a genius decision. Having your overdrive attacks linked to a separate meter other than your super meter 
opens up room for different combos because you can immediately do stuff. The game lets you immediately do things that would need overdrive in things like Street Fighter V. So a lot of Kens are really into the... They hit you with the jabs and then they do the overdrive head kick, which puts them on the other side of you and then they can go into their level one super... I've seen that happen a lot, and that can't happen in Street Fighter V without at least, I think it's two bars of super. In SF6, you can do it with one bar of super and right off the bat because you've got six bars of drive meter. And that's just the overdrive attacks. The specific things tied to the drive gauge, drive impact, drive rush, and drive parry are fascinating. They are so cool to watch. Obviously, the thing that I've experienced the most is Drive Impact. I am not ranked very high. I'm not very good at Street Fighter. I haven't been playing it for that long, so I'm still getting used to how the game feels compared to others. Drive Impact is the thing that I've seen the most, and it is ridiculous. It feels really bad using it on offense. I've been getting a little bit better about using it on offense and not using it so recklessly, but it is super easy to punish. Not for the characters that I play, unfortunately. A lot of my characters don't have really fast attacks. But for characters like Kimberly, Ken, Chun-Li, they're very easy to break drive impact. So I don't think it's going to be super over-centralizing like a lot of doomsayers were talking about at the beginning of the game's life cycle and even before the game came out. Before they even had a chance to experience. Because, you know, that's just what people are like. They're always doomsaying before they even get a chance to see what it's like. The two more complicated mechanics linked to the drive gauge are so fascinating to watch. So drive rush is messed up. It is probably the most busted part about the drive gauge. Drive impact is super flashy. It has a huge animation and all of this stuff. Drive rush lets you do combos that are not possible with that. Like you could not do some of the stuff that characters like dj are doing like jury are doing like cami are doing they would be impossible to do without the drive rush and they are disgusting and i mean that in the best possible way i was saying earlier dj has sauce he has the most sauce out of any character in this game because of the drive rush mechanic doing full screen lunges into links into a drive rush into a link into another drive rush into the machine gun upper has been nasty absolutely disgusting i was saying earlier that zangief makes really good use of drive rush because he can link attacks into a drive rush into an immediate command throw all of the grapplers are able to do that zangief manon lily they all have sequences where they can link their normal attacks like their normal attack sequences and then get a command throw off of it and that is super it's just gross but it's so cool to watch Manon in particular, since I've had the most experience, I've actually seen her do a few different routes with it, which is pretty sick. And Lily being like this weird, super long range grappler lets her do some real nasty stuff with Drive Rush and that's super sick. Drive Parry, I think is the most complicated of the mechanics and it's probably going to be the hardest one to grasp for me. It does not feel intuitive when you first try it. I've been working on using it a little more often because it beats certain things like drive impact in the corner. It tends to beat a lot of jump-ins, which helps, especially since I'm so bad at anti-airing. But it also has other utility, like if you drive parry perfectly, so if you drive parry the instant something would hit you, you are super plus off of that and you can just smoke your opponent. You can also drive rush immediately out of drive parry and i think it uses less bar than linking an attack into a drive rush so there is that option for you i have yet to really use it in a real match i've been trying it in training mode obviously but having that application could come up and it might end up being really important who really knows like i said we're only a month into the game's lifespan we don't know how many of these things are going to be integral to Street Fighter VI gameplay long-term or even short-term for that matter. We just don't know. The game's been out for less than a month. But the fact that the game has only been out for a month, less than that, 
And there's so there's this much depth and complexity that people have found this early on between all of the different characters, all of their interactions, all of the system mechanics, even between the different control styles. Fantastic design happening here. Absolutely wonderful design happening here. I could not have asked for a more well-structured and well-thought-out system for a fighting game. And that's just like the PvP aspect, right? We haven't even gotten into what I think is the best part of Street Fighter 6, which is World Tour. Now, I haven't played I haven't gotten a chance to play a ton of World Tour yet. I haven't really had the time. I'm planning on it a little bit later on, but what I have played of it has been so cool. Getting to see all of the character interactions between your avatar and where the world warriors are at currently, whether they're old or new, is super fun. I had a huge smile on my face the entire time I was playing it. Getting encouraged by your favorite Street Fighter characters to get stronger. It sounds dumb, but honestly, it's super endearing. I love it a ton. And watching your avatar run around and beat the hell out of random people on the street is super funny. It is a bit different than in PvP because there are like when you learn a character's uh special or their super sometimes it's a little different like uh I have Marissa's level 1 super unlocked on my current avatar and it requires doing the normal super input but specifically doing light punch for the attack button instead of just using any of the punch buttons that was a little bit weird to get used to because I'm normally used to using medium or heavy for it. Uh, but other than that, it's not that bad. And getting to mix and match attacks from different characters is super bizarre. Like, I was using Chun-Li's Kikoken, and also I had Marissa's level 1 super and also her Superman punch. That was super bizarre having like a projectile on a character that was using a bunch of marissa's moves but it's also super cool i think that's neat that you could do that again not super far into world tour mode at this time but i think putting world tour in the game is the best thing that capcom could have done to bring in new players and especially casuals who are either afraid to try to get into like fgc stuff or just like, yeah, I'm going to get my ass beat the whole time. I really don't want to do that. I kind of just want to play the game and have some fun. World Tour is literally perfect for that. It is so perfect for that specifically that it probably sold a couple hundred thousand copies by itself. Also, the character creator is ridiculously in-depth. The best thing Capcom did for the character creator, it's just make it the Saints Row character creator. I am not kidding. It is literally just the Saints Row character creator, and that is the best thing they could have done for uh, a creative character style of thing that they wanted to implement into their single player experience. And then there's Battle Hub. Battle Hub is probably not something that I'm going to use super often just because I'm playing World Tour. And I really just like to get into my matches, so I usually just go to fighting ground for that. That said, World Tour has a ton in it. Like, I can go and hang out, see all of everybody's horrific monstrosity avatars, get a good laugh out of that, and then just mess around. Like, I was just in there screwing around for a while the other day. Checking out everybody's avatars, looking to see if anybody wanted to play any of the weird, like, mini game fighting game versions where there's, like, the bull that shows up, or you have to do the break the targets thing from melee or whatever. Like, I was just in there hanging out, checking that stuff out. Not to mention, you can buy all of the, like, character customization items for your avatar in the Battle Hub. And also, they have a section for tournaments. I don't think they're ready yet. But having actual in-game, in-client tournaments for Street Fighter available in, like, the social area is super cool. I love that. I'm probably going to play in a few of them just because I think it's fun. I like playing in tournaments, even though I'm not that great. Just because 
the like the competition and the rivalry and the banter and then like that stuff is super fun it's why i like going to locals events for these so much because it's just about hanging out having a good time and playing some good fucking street fighter that's what i am the most excited about for this game this is a good fighting game it is a great fighting game everything about it aside from some weird technical difficulties that happened on day one, but I'm pretty sure that's just from, like, server overload because everyone and their mom was playing this game. It's been fantastic. I could not have asked for a better fighting game experience. Obviously, new players are going to struggle a bit with this just like they would with any other fighting game because it's a fighting game. These games are hard. They're complicated. They're very in-depth. They're not super easy to parse at a beginner level. But those that stick it out, those that actively want to continue playing the game, wanting to learn, wanting to grow, wanting to experience more of this, I think are going to have a fantastic time. And whether they want to be the best Street Fighter player ever and go win Capcom Cup, go get the million dollars, go steal the trophy out from Brian F, out from Punk, out from Mena RD, out from all of those guys. Or if they just want to hang out with their friends and do the goofy avatar battles that they trained up and gained experience from by playing World Tour mode. That is fucking beautiful. Street Fighter VI is the perfect package for a fighting game. And I hope it sets the standard for every fighting game to follow. I think that's all I have to say about the game. We're obviously going to keep playing it. I'm going to keep coming back to it. There's going to be a whole lot more to say in a month from now, in three months from now, six months from now, a year from now. Because the game is going to evolve. We're going to get more characters. There's going to be changes to some things over the years. We're going to probably get more modes for Battle Hub. We're going to get more customization items for all of our characters. There's probably going to be story DLC for World Tour mode. Capcom hit this game out of the park. This was a perfect video game. I have nothing more to say about it. It is such a wonderful, wonderful, beautiful fighting game experience. And I can't wait to share more of it with everyone here. Thank you to everyone for listening. My name has been Leona DX, and please enjoy the rest of your stay here in the Battle Lounge.